What's good YouTube and welcome back to another video from me. So it's been quite some time since the last upload but I finally found something that I really want to document for YouTube and I feel really passionate about and that is as you can see from the title already I am prepping for my first marathon or like I'm training for my first marathon and the whole idea of this is whatever this series or season you want to call it. I just want to document my whole prep to my first marathon and just want to show you like all the stepping stones I have, and like everything I have to overcome. And I don't want to make this like, this is the best nutrition for running or this is the best shoe for running because that is not the case. Like I have no clue about running. I have to learn everything like for, for the first time. I have absolutely no knowledge. And rather than being like, oh, I'm this PT that knows everything, I want to show you with this series, like how you can go from a noob, which I am basically am since I'm starting out running, to how you can get to running your first marathon and like all the stepping stones I had or have or have well, like actually they already started. But regardless of that, I really want to dive into like training with like running, then also like what shoes I will choose, what nutrition will I change, how, like what I'm trying to do for like better recovery. And then the whole part will also be kind of like intertwined with my normal training because I don't want to like jump from like weightlifting to just marathon and running training because I don't want to look like a marathon runner. I like to be a bit more swole and like trained. So this will also be a challenge to kind of like become this hybrid athlete of like still doing like weight training and calisthenics and then also doing running. Of course, I have to like increase mobility training as well. So you will see that's kind of a lot of stuff to take into and that is why I want to create this kind of like series so that I can show you guys how I am attempting to do this and maybe it will inspire some of you to do the same. Change up the training, do some CrossFit training, not in like the sense of CrossFit, but rather do like aerobic resistance training with like calisthenics or mobility or whatever it is just to get a bit more fit and healthy. So right off the bat, I quickly want to talk a little bit of how this whole idea of running a marathon came to be. So obviously Corona happened in 2020 and is still ongoing and gyms got closed here in Germany and I, not gonna lie, I completely fell off the wagon and I like stopped exercising. I was like, oh yeah, gym's gonna open really soon again. And then I didn't buy any equipment. I was like, it's so expensive for just like the few weeks I will train at home. But obviously that was not the case. So I just like had stopped training. I was feeling very sluggish. I wasn't like happy the way I looked. And then obviously the easiest thing to do was like, you know what, I'm just gonna throw on some running shoes and I'm gonna start running. And boy oh boy, that was harsh. Like I did back then when I started running, it was like June or something. I still have, I have a, my first 5K run on YouTube. I'm gonna put in the card somewhere up in the corner so you can click on that. That was a very humbling experience. Like I was so slow. I wasn't good at running at all. And to be honest, I thought I would be way better because obviously I'm a trained individual. I can go to the gym often when I do a diet, I do a lot of cardio. So I was thinking like, I should be pretty good at this, right? But that was not the case. Like my joints were hurting, my heart rate was through the roof, like it was crazy. And from there on, I really, I enjoyed running the first time I did it. But I didn't have any structure, I didn't have any goal I wanna train for. So like when I first started running, it was just like once or twice a week, nothing really serious. And then like over the weeks, maybe sometimes I would skip it and then I had like minor injuries and I had to pause. And then like when 2021 came in, I was like, you know what, I want to dedicate more training to running. And I was like, what's, what's the goal? What, what, I'm, what I want to achieve with this, right? And running a marathon was always like one of my lifetime fitness goals. I have like a list of things I want to achieve. And I was like, I want to run a marathon. I was like, what better time to start than now? So I went on training peaks, I bought a training plan and I started running or I'm starting to run. And um, yeah, it's pretty damn excited. I'm really happy about it. Running has something very therapeutic. For, therapeutic, is that a word, how you say it? For me, and it's just like, you know, like in this fast paced world, you wake up, you watch your phone, you sit on a computer all day. And running is just like that you unplug. I don't even like listen to a podcast or music or anything. I just put on my shoes, I run, and I just focus on breathing and everything. And it's super enjoyable. So that was a lot of talking. Without further ado, let's jump into the first episode of Marathon Prep. I hope you enjoy this and hope you stick with the video.
So it is the first day of marathon prep and right now it is quarter past eight on the 4th of January. And to be honest, I'm really excited to start this whole journey. I'm also a bit nervous. Also, it is that darn cold outside. It's like just zero degrees and it's also snowing. So chose a great time to start this whole thing, but we're gonna get it done regardless. Right now I'm just drinking up my coffee. Hopefully this will help me lose some weight. And then also I'm just hydrating before the run, just the basic run of things. Right now I wanna get this first run in, which is my aerobic threshold test. If you don't know what it is, don't worry. First I'm gonna do the run, then I get all the data, put it into computer, and then I'm gonna show you why I did this run, how I did it, and like what's the reason behind it. So without further ado, let's get that first run of marathon prep. about to hit the 30 minute mark finally found my pace and my groove so my heart rate is at 155 beats per minute feeling fresh feeling good so just 30 more minutes So just hit minute 50 and it started to snow, but we're gonna finish strong, feeling good, heart rate stabilizing in just 10 more minutes and then we're done. So it is a couple of hours after the run, already showered up, already had breakfast, but I'm super hungry again. So I can already feel that my body is in need for calories. It can definitely feel that I'm running and I'm like using more calories than usual. So I'm gonna have lunch real quick and afterwards, I'm gonna tell you like why did the aerobic threshold work out? Or like what's the whole point and idea of it? So just stick with me. So we have the most brownish meal ever right now. So this is just 80 grams of rice with 200 grams of chicken breast. And then we have like, I don't know, maybe like 20, 30 grams of avocado sprinkled along with some light yogurt sauce and some shiracha. Uh, usually I keep the lunch meals pretty simple because I don't want to cook like a lot and I prep them in preparation. Also, I would like to have a bit more veggies with this, but I didn't have anything prepped, but gonna dig in and then we're gonna go to the office. So now that I'm in the office, let's talk about the aerobic threshold test that I did on the first day of marathon prep. But before I explain how you do the test and what it is for, you need to know that the body has three different pathways in order to generate energy. The first two are anaerobic, meaning there's no oxygen present. They produce energy very fast, very quick, but they also exhaust it very fast. The third one, however, is the aerobic pathway, meaning only in the presence of oxygen, the body is able to produce energy. So depending on the intensity that you're doing your exercise, whatever it may be like running, weightlifting, swimming, your body will choose the pathways accordingly. Meaning if you do something very intensive, very hard, the body will choose like the first and the second one. If you do something very slow and steady, then the body will choose the third pathway, which is also the one that the body can sustain for a very, very long time. For example, if you run a marathon, it's going your body needs to produce energy for like two, three, four hours. So as you already maybe guessed with the aerobic threshold test, we want to know at what beats per minute the body is switching from aerobic pathway to anaerobic pathway. Because for marathon training, you mostly want to train in the aerobic zone because you want to be built in that fitness. You want to run that as a good pace. You want to be able to sustain that for a long period of time. We don't care about the anaerobic pathways because for a marathon, you're gonna run for like several hours, right? So now that you know about the three different pathways, I wanna give a quick heads up before I tell you more about the aerobic threshold test because the training plan I bought was from Training Peaks and they have a premium membership 
And in order to get like the final data, you will need to have a premium account. For me, it was an easy choice because I'm very invested into the marathon. It's just like, I don't know, for a month it's like $20. If you get it billed annually, it's just like 10 euros, uh, $10 or something. So you probably can find also the calculation online if you search for it. I was just too lazy. So here's how you do the test. You want to warm up for 15 minutes. You want to run at a very easy pace. So the perceived effort should be easy and you should still be able to hold like a normal conversation. And after the 15 minutes are over, you want to immediately start your heart monitoring Pro, uh, device, whatever that be, like a watch or a heart rate monitor, and you want to continue to run for one full hour. And once you want to, you, once you are done, you can just jump into training peaks. I'm going to show you my data right now. I'm going to do a screen recording and let's check the data out. So this is the training peaks website, and here you can see the it, the training was labeled as aerobic threshold test. I ran for one whole hour. I ran 9.1 kilometers, and this graph right here is just my beats per minute. This down here, as you can see, was the duration, and then on top is the beats per minute that was recorded. And some, like a little problem I had was, as you can see, the first beats per minute data I have is 155. So when I started the test, I was kind of a little bit eager. I was running harder than I was running before. So before I was always checking my, my heart rate, it was like 152, 153, maybe like 155. And then when I continued, or like when I started the test, I was going like full send. So the first data, data I had was a bit too high. I adjusted that and then it, as you can see, it was going, getting down to like 154, 155 and then I sustained that for the most part of the training. I got up to like 162, 163 and the interesting number you can see at the end is the pace to heart rate. So you get the percentage number right here, which is 2.19. And there are three options that can happen or like three outcomes that can happen. If you have a zero to 3.5%, that means you did anaerobic training, but you were training too effortless, like it was too easy. You're not at your threshold pace, uh, threshold be beats per minute. If you get a number between 3.5 and 5, you absolutely nailed it. You know the first number that was recorded is your threshold beats per minute. Or if you're over 5%, that means you were running too hard, the training was too exhausting, and this is over your threshold. So in my case, it was 2.91, which isn't far off. It's like if you take into account like it should actually have recorded with like 155 154 and then it would get up to like 163 this number right here would have been a little bit higher and i would have actually made like the 3.5 percent so i just estimated for myself that my threshold beat per minute is the 155 and that is the one i am now training with so this is it guys i hope you enjoyed the first episode of the marathon prep series i definitely did i hope you got some insight from the aerobic threshold test and how it kind of can affect your whole training and how it can make you better and faster so if you're not doing this already with like watching your beats per minute i can just highly recommend you doing that and without further ado i'm going to close off the video right here like i said if you enjoyed it please leave a thumbs up maybe subscribe and i'm going to see you in the next episode